Gal Einai Vabita Niflot Mitoratecha. There are a number of uh, illusions to uh, Lagba Omer. And one of them, of where do we, what is the idea of Lagba Omer? Lagba Omer is the letters Gal. Gal literally means to reveal. And the verse which is found in Psalms is King David writes in Psalm 119, And he asks the Creator that he should take off literally the, uh, the, whatever is obscuring his eyes and now to reveal secrets from your Torah. And so Lagba Omer is connected to this verse called Gal. And Gal comes from the word, well actually we know the Galilee, the Galil, it's not by any chance that Rabbi Shimon decided to go to the Galil because the Galil, the Galilee has to do with also revealing these great secrets. Also the Galil is from the word Gola. Gal could also be Gola, could also be exile, and to reveal the exile, to reveal the hiddenness is exactly the uh, purpose of what Rabbi Shimon came down to do in this world, to reveal these immense secrets of creation. And now, so let's just go into this verse a little bit more in greater detail. So, Gal Enai, King David says, open up my eyes, and show me wonders from your Torah. So it's not just one wonder, but it says niflaot is in plural. Show me wonders from your Torah. And the explanation as brought down in various sources is that niflaot, that the word nifla literally stands for wonder. Nifla means, comes from the root word of pele, of wonders. I want to see wonders. But niflaot, two wonders, have to do with Razin, secrets, and we have Razin de Razin. We've got secrets of secrets. Two levels of secrets. And so the Torah is compared to different types of foods. It's actually compared to bread. King David writes in a different place that that and lechem lechulachmu belachmi it's compared to bread. And then it's also compared to water. And those two aspects are compared to the revealed aspects of Torah. And then we go to milk. Milk is the oral Torah, just like the milk comes from the mother and the mother nurses the baby. And so too, the oral Torah comes from the feminine side. And there's the Bible, there is the Torah Shebechtav, there is the written Torah, and there, there is the oral Torah. And the oral Torah goes into the depth of what the written Torah is really talking about. And so there's a deeper revelation via milk. And then we go a little bit more than that, and we go into uh, wine. And wine is secrets. And we go over here to the mystical aspects. So while the oral Torah reveals the, the intention of the, of the written Torah on a what we call nigle, nigle on a revealed level, the mystical aspects of the Torah now bring out the greater depth of what the written Torah is really talking about. And it's going into the mysteries of the revealed aspects of Torah, that from the revealed aspects of Torah, there is actually great mysteries. And so we could take, for example, the Chumash, the regular uh, Bible that we call, open it up and read it, and we could think that we're reading stories, we're reading laws, we're reading history, etc. No. It's actually secrets. There are secrets that are there from within the revealed aspect of Torah. And that is true within our, our lives. That the truth is that within the revealed aspect of, lives, of our lives, within the mundane, there is such depth that is always there. 
And it takes the right type of vision to see that and that our lives essentially are completely miraculous every way we look at it. The minor things in life as well as the major things are in life are all really extremely miraculous and above our understanding. And so by revealing those secrets and in order to reveal those secrets, we have to first reveal them within the Torah. And so being connected to the secrets of Torah brings out those secrets also within our lives. And so Rabbi Shimon did not just reveal the secrets of the Torah, Razin, but rather Niflaot. Let me see Pele within Pele, secrets within secrets called Razin de Razin. And the comparison to that is the comparison to oil. So we've got wine, which is secrets, as it says, Nichnasiain Yatsasod, wine goes in, secret go, secrets come out. But then even above wine is the level of oil. Because we know that oil always rises to the top. Oil is the razin de razin, secrets of, of secrets. And in the famous song of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, Bar Yochai, Nimshachta Shrecha Shemen Sasan Mechavercha. You're compared to oil, to all of your friends. All of your friends, the great Tanaim, the holy Tanaim, are all the level of wine, milk, water, bread, etc. But you are compared to oil, rising above all of them. As Rabbi Akiva says that to Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, he said to him, says, It's enough that just me and your Creator know who you are. And of course, uh, that revelation of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, who he was, right, is something that was revealed to us in the book of the Zohar that revealed the Razin and Razin the Razin secrets of secrets. And so it's interesting that the Zohar is written on the portions of the Torah. It's not written on uh, by different subjects, like for example, the Talmud is written on different, different subjects. Rather, it's written right there on the portions of the Torah, the Gans Darm, the 53 portions. And that is really the depth of what King David says, Gal Einai ve'abita niflaot mitoratecha, that open up my eyes and I will see, I will perceive great secrets from within your Torah, from within the actual written Torah, the 53 portions of the Torah, I will see those secrets from within it, but not just one secret. Niflaot is plural, razin and razin de razin, secrets of secrets. So that is something that we also get when we are connected to the Torah of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai. When we're connected to the revelation of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai within the Zohar, within the right, within his famous book that was written by him, by his students, etc. We also have this great revelation. And the book of the Zohar is called Zohar from the word illumination. Because the word is that really we are illuminated, our eyes are illuminated, Gal Einai, with the writings of the Zohar. And by the study of the Zohar and the applications of the Zohar, and by the writings of the Arizal and the Baal Shem Tov and the Balatanya and Hasidus throughout, etc., we are connected to the Torah of Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, as it says over there in the Zohar, that from this book of the Zohar is where uh, others should study and this study should become elaborated and it should become more and more understood in greater, greater depth to the mind of the person. So over here we see that the person themselves, Gal Einai, that my, that my own eyes, that we individually have to uh, do the job of working and to try to strive to understand. And when we strive to understand, then we are revealed these great secrets of the Torah. And via the study of the Zohar and Hasidus, we have this great gift that Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai left to the world, left to each and every one of us, 
that all we have to do is open up our eyes and to study those great texts.